So today, mainly we are going to discuss about NABL accreditation. If we want to know about NABL accreditation, first we need to know about what is QCI, that is Quality Council of India. Generally, Quality Council of India uh, is generally composed of two important, important criteria, that is accreditation and quality promotion. Quality Council of India is governed by a council of 38 members with equal representation of government, industry and consumers. Chairman of QCI is appointed by Prime Minister Office on recommendation of government and industry. Council is the apex level of body responsible for formulating the strategy, general policy, constitution and monitoring of various components of QCI with objective to ensure transparent and credible accreditation system. Each board functions independently with its own chairperson appointed by the QCI chairman and with the members representing various stakeholders. So when we talk about QCI, it is mainly, mainly responsible for the two important functions. One is accreditation, another is quality promotion. When you talk about accreditation, it's generally accreditations are generally given to four different bodies. First is National Accreditation Board for Certification Bodies, National Accreditation Board for Education and Training, National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Providers, National Accreditation Board for Testing and Laboratories. Our main target is to know that is NABL, National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories. Then another portion is that quality promotion. When we talk about quality promotion, two important, uh, important services are given that is National Board for Quality Promotion and Quality Information and Equity Services. So let's come to the our main topic that is NABL, National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories. It is an autonomous society registered under Society Act that is in 1992 providing accreditation of technical competence of a testing, calibration, medical laboratory and proficiency testing provider and reference material producers. So they are mainly responsible for accrediting testing, accrediting labs which are conducting testing, calibration, medical laboratory and proficiency testing providers. NABL is an autonomous body under the ages of Department of Science and Technology. It comes under Department of Science and Technology government of India. It is only one of its kinds that assess laboratories in India for quality and consistency in the result. So when we talk about NABL, if we know about that a lab is NABL accredited, that means its standard is maintained. That is, it is uh, what international standards is maintained. So when we talk about NABL, it generally mainly responsible for the accrediting lab, which are following the guidelines and maintaining an quality standard. NABL has agreements with ILAC that is International Laboratory Accreditation Conference and APLAC that is Asia Pacific Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. These are especially valuable for international recognition and mutual acceptance, mutual acceptance of test results. In short, accreditation has worldwide acceptance. Just now I was talking about if any laboratory which is NABL accredited, its results are worldwide accepted. NABL has been established with the objective to provide government, industry and society in general with a scheme for a third party, party assessment of quality and technical acceptance of testing and calibration laboratories. Government of India has authorized NABL as the sole accreditation body for testing and calibration laboratories. So they are the third party. Government of India, they will not go and directly accredit. They will appoint, they are appointing NABL. NABL provides laboratory accreditation services to the laboratories that are performing test calibration in accordance with NABL criteria based on internationally accepted standard for laboratory accreditation that is ISO or IEC 17025. These services are offered in a non-discriminatory manner and are accessible to all testing and calibration laboratories in India and abroad regardless of their ownership, legal status, size and degree of independence. My next topic we are going to discuss that is scope of NABL accreditation. NABL grants accreditation in almost 
all areas of science, engineering and medical testing. The international standard followed are for different, uh, different kind of category. We have different kind of ISO that is international standard organization. They have given some uh, guidelines. So for medical testing, we have an ISO 15189 is to 2007. When you talk about for testing and calibration, we have an ISO or IEC 17025 is to 2005. And when we talk about proficiency testing provider for that ISO 170 is to 2010. The laboratory should be legally identifiable and appropriately registered. They can be part of a big organization or an independent entity. Enable accreditation is currently given in the following fields. First is testing laboratory, calibration laboratory, and last one is the medical laboratories. When you talk about testing laboratories, uh, mainly they are biological, chemical, electrical, electronics, fluid flow, mechanical, non-destructive test testing, optical and photometry, radiological, thermal, forensic. These are some of the example of testing laboratories. When you talk about calibration laboratories on that, Electrotechnical method, mechanical, radiological, thermal, optical, fluid flow. When you talk about medical laboratories, it may be clinical biochemistry, clinical pathology, genetics, cytopathology, hematology, and immunohematology, histopathology, microbiology, and serology. And finally, nuclear medicine. That is mainly enable enables are giving accreditation to mainly three kinds of labs: that is testing laboratories, calibration laboratories, and medical laboratories. Now, what are the benefits of getting NABL accredited? That is benefits of accreditation. First is that increased confidence in testing, oblique calibration, calibration reports issued by the laboratory. That means uh, whenever we go for any kind of, suppose bio, uh, biochemistry test, suppose a person is going for any thyroid kind of testing, thyroid testing. So first, what we'll, uh, what we'll have to uh, look at, that particular lab is NABL accredited or not. So if it is NABL accredited, so we'll get the confidence of the result, whatever the lab is giving, it will be of good quality. So first is that increased confidence in testing and calibration report issued by the laboratory. Next, better control of laboratory operation and feedback to laboratories as to whether they have sound quality assurance system uh, and are technically competent. Next one, potential increase in business due to enhanced customer confidence certain satisfaction the first point i was talking about next customer can search and identify the laboratories accredited by nabl for the specific requirements from the nabl website or dictionary of an accredited laboratories so they have a website from there suppose we have i am staying in uh, suppose kolkata zone so under kolkata this particular test and nabl how many labs are there and what is the location once we know the location we can easily locate them then we can uh, do our work done next users of accredited laboratories enjoy greater access for their products in both domestic and international markets savings in terms of time money due to reduction or elimination of the need for retesting of the product that is one of the most important criteria when you talk about we have a tag of NABL that means the result what we obtained it is something of highest uh, quality that is they are maintaining a proper criteria for quality assurance so there is no need of retesting you do a test in kolkata you go for the treatment of na aims if the laboratory is nabl accredited accredited your results will be your test data will be accepted next now next most important part how a lab can go for nabl accreditation so we are going to discuss accreditation process so it is divided into it is mainly uh, that is a 10 step procedure so we'll start up with point number one that is an applicant laboratory is expected to submit to nabl five copies of the application and five copies of the quality manual next the quality manual will be forwarded by the nabl to the lead assessor to judge adequacy of the quality manual as to whether it is compliance with the iso 15189 standards so these are very very important thing you need to mention that which guy which iso is saying what next thereafter lead assessor will conduct a pre-assessment report of the laboratory for one day based on the pre-assessment report the laboratory 
may have to take certain corrective actions so as to be fully prepared for the final assessment. So first is like a trial. Once this trial is done, so they are they need to ready for the final assessment. That is called first is pre-assessment. It is essential for the applicant as well as accredited laboratories to satisfactorily participate in proficiency testing, inter-laboratory comparison, external quality assessment program as given by APLAC. That is already we have, we, we have come across that is Asia, Asia Pacific Laboratory Accreditation. Mutual recognition arrangement calls for mandatory particip participation in such programs. Next, point number five. Finally, the laboratory is ready. The lead assessor and the team of technical assessor will conduct the final assessment. That means they will visit at that time. The number of technical assessor will depend on the number of discipline applied for. Next, the accreditation process involves a thorough assessment of all the elements of the laboratory that contribute to the production of accurate and reliable test data. These elements include staffing, training, supervision, quality control, equipment, recording and reporting of the test results and the environment in which the laboratory operates. If these are the things they ensure, that means we can expect, expect a better and quality results. The laboratory may have to take certain corrective actions after final assessment. After satisfactory corrective actions are taken by the laboratory within a period of three months, the accreditation committee will examine the report and if satisfied, I recommend accreditation. The time required for the process of accreditation will depend upon the preparedness of the laboratory and its response of non-conformances raised during the pre-assessment and the final assessment. The total duration ranges between six to eight months. Surveillance and re-assessment accreditation to a laboratory shall be valid for a period of three years. NABL should conduct annual surveillance of the accredited laboratories. The laboratories may enhance or reduce the scope of accreditation during surveillance. The laboratories need to apply for renewal of accreditation at least six months before the expiry of validity of accreditation for which re-assessment shall be conducted. So pre-assessment followed by final assessment. So they have some timeline they can all go for the so this is they could go for the accreditation process finally these are the different 10 different steps we can follow a laboratory who is who wish to get an avail accreditation they can follow this 10 10 point principle we can call it as so we are uh, we are into the last topic of this particular uh, particular nabl accreditation process as per pci syllabus so we are everyone is always talking about accreditation accreditation so how accreditation and certification is different so just we'll check what is certification and what is accreditation so when we talk about certification certification is a comprehensive evaluation of a process system product event or skill typically measured against some existing norm or standard when you talk about accreditation, is a formal declaration by a neutral third party that the certification program is administered in a way that meets relevant norms of standard of certification program. Certification is just a comparison. Whereas when you talk about accreditation, that means whatever the process it is adopting, it should meet the relevant norms of standard certification program. Certification doesn't make any statement about the technical competence of the laboratory where in case of accreditation uses criteria specifically developed to determine technical competence of the laboratory. Certification is different, accreditation is different. When you talk about certification that is ISO 9001-2005 certification and when you talk about accreditation ISO 17025 accreditation. So when we talk about certification, certification is just comparing with the standard whereas accreditation means you need to execute then only you will consider as an accredited so this this is the end of the particular topic so just we'll just uh, just uh, what to tell rewind what are the things we have studied first we have seen that what is qci what are the different qci what are the things qci is controlling next we have come to the what is nabl how what are the different scope of nabl and why what are the different laboratories nabl is generally accrediting 
then we have seen what is the benefits of NABL accreditation then what are the different what are the different steps we need to follow for getting NABL accreditation and finally we have seen the basic differences between and what is certification and what is accreditation thank you hope you people like it i will come soon with a new video thank you